Good morning, travelers. Tara here. I had not planned on bringing you an open reading uh, today, but uh, we are coming up on this uh, full moon um, on Monday, and um, I think most people who uh, HSPs or highly sensitive people uh, tend to um, have more psychic activity around full moons. Um, I'm, in a sense, rather pleasantly surprised. This is a Scorpio full moon, and Scorpio full moons are can be really, really tough sometimes because they bring about uh, an intensity of emotions. Um, and for me, this is really a rather gentle kind of a cycle. Nevertheless, um, my guides um, woke me up at 6.31, uh, usually it is three something in the morning, but today it was it was six thirty one. I remember waking up and looking at the clock. So I'm going to just go ahead and bring uh, this open reading now. Um, Philippa H in Kenya. I have not heard from you in months, but a strange thing happened, um, and so I want you to email me and let me know how you're doing. Uh, I gave you a personal reading, or I did a reading. I can't remember which one it was. And I remember saying that there was a Ferris wheel and I kept seeing a Ferris wheel. And then you emailed me a few days later, said you were traveling. And when you got off the airplane at the airport, right across the street was a Ferris wheel. Well, yes, a couple of days ago, I was thinking about you and this Ferris wheel popped up on the television. I don't know what I was watching, but it looked exactly like the Ferris wheel I remember seeing. Uh, when I did that reading. So that kind of let me know, um, you know, then I need to hear from Philippa. So please, if you get an opportunity, I know you travel a lot and you work a lot, drop me an email and let me know how you're doing. Now, um, one of the things that I have found that I'm, I'm, I'm looking at right now um, in terms of how this particular full moon is manifesting itself for me, I had a client, I think she's a client, I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Either way, she watches my channel. Her name is Sheena. <clears throat> and Sheena emailed me a couple of days ago. And she goes, you know, I had a dream about you. Now, that's something very I don't hear very often where people will contact me and say, you know, I dreamt about you. So she says, I dreamt about you. And I, and I met you, you know, in this one particular place. And I was so surprised to meet you there. And we were talking. And then suddenly this guy, and she describes the guy. Well, turns out that this guy is my twin flame who showed up in her dream. And um, I thought that was very, very interesting because I have an effect kind of blocked out. I had to go through some, some psychic gymnastics to do that, but I was able to block out um, any contact with this person. Um, it, it, it was a real problem for me because we have my moon, my moon, we both have the moon in the same sign. His moon conjuncts my north and south nodes. My moon conjuncts his north and south nodes. In addition, we have the Mercury and Neptune double whammy. So we have we have a lot of double whammies in our chart. And a double whammy is uh, one of my planets will make an aspect to his, and that planet will make an aspect to my planets. So we have a Neptune-Mercury um, double whammy, which means that we really can psychically communicate with each other. Um, so I just thought, well, how weird and why, why would he come to me through somebody else's dream? Well, it's cause I blocked him out. So anyway, um, <laughs> so if you've been getting some weird things or people saying weird things or stuff's coming up, uh, it could be, you know, more than likely it, it could be this full moon along with the nodal shifts. Now, remember the nodes are going to be moving. The true nodes of the moon are going to be moving from Virgo Pisces, they were that way since 2015, the, the nodes stay in a particular axis for about 18 months, and they're now moving into the Leo Aquarius. So even if you don't have a North Node Leo and a South Node Aquarius, what you would do is you would take your chart and see where the, the sign of Leo and the sign of Aquarius fall on your house, on your chart. And um, there will be some changes, some repeats and things going on in whatever department of life that that particular house, wherever it falls on your chart. 
Um, those of you who have your charts from me, particularly your zero Aries chart, um, you can contact me. Um, I can take, if you got something going on and you're kind of curious as to how that may play out, you know, come over and tell me and I can run or do a progression and look at your, your solar sign chart. And that will put the sun, your sun on the first house. And we can try to see what's, what's going on. Now, for those of you who might be interested in a personal reading, uh, first of all, uh, my turnaround time for readings are between 48 to 72 hours after you've made the booking. Um, if you are interested in a reading by phone, when you get to the website, there is a tab on the menu. You'll see readings by phone. Hover your mouse over that and a side menu will pop out. At the very top is a tab that says important information on booking. Please read that because it will explain everything that you need to know about booking a phone reading with me. For a private video reading, there's a separate tab and that is, um, what do you call it? That's kind of self-evident there. I do ask that you read everything before you submit payment and a booking form, okay? Um, <clears throat> now, uh, in order to get to the website, Click on the little right eye, the little eye here in the corner or whatever it says because I don't even know. I don't normally look at the videos after I post them. And that will take you directly over to the website. I have website membership options. I will be starting the individual extended monthly tarots uh, probably on Tuesday after we go through this um, nodal shift and the full moon. I'm going to be posting those up on the website. Um, but you also get two free birth charts. And there are lots of astrology articles, metaphysical articles. I'm going to be posting up a few things um, sometime this week. Um, so there's different membership, different level membership options. Go over and take a look. You know, if you'd like to join or just come in and see what's there, um, you can um, take a 30 day. It's only seven bucks. Uh, the next level is six months for twenty eight dollars. That's recurring. You can always cancel it if you so choose after the six months and you don't want to re-up. You could just go in and cancel it. You can even pause it. Let's say, for instance, that you don't have time to be messing around with me for a while. You got something else. You can even pause the membership and then come back and resume it. And then it'll just pick up where it left off. Um, and then there's the $50 yearly. So um, let's get started. I'm going to use the... Um, Prisma Visions Tarot today. I have not used those in a while. I also have the Neapolitans here along with the um, Everyday Oracle. And so we're just going to open the cards and see uh, what the energy is here. We are moving into a new cycle and the nodes return to the same sign every 18 years. And you know, that's that's funny because that gives us the number 36, which is also nine. And there are nine year cycles um, in numerology. Um, and um, so the last time that the nodes, the true nodes were in Leo and Aquarius were between 1998 and 2000. So you wanna think back to where you were, what you were doing. Uh, during that time. If you were just born during that time, then this will be your first nodal return. Okay. <clears throat> Let's lay the cards. Ace of Wands. Three of Pentacles. Judgment. Hmm. The Fool. The Queen of Cups or the Queen of Chalices, right in the center. Huh. The Three of Wands. Wow, the Magician. <laughs> the Hanged Man. And the Seven of Wands.
with the Eight of Pentacles underneath the deck. I don't know if you can see that. It's such a stupid glare. Okay, there, there, there. I don't know. If, now you can't really see it. There. And there's a woman watering her garden, her sunflowers. <clears throat> hmm. Um, so for those of you who don't know anything about the tarot, um, it's divided into two separate groups. It's 78 cards, but it's divided into two groups. We have the major arcana cards. These are our named cards like Judgment, the Fool, the Magician, and the Hanged Man. Then we have what are known as the Pip cards. These are the minor arcana cards, and these are on the mundane level. Um, they include our numbered cards like the Three of Pentacles, the Three of Wands, the Seven of Wands. <clears throat> they include all the Aces. They also include our court cards. So let me show you the cards. There is the Ace of Wands. Is that not a phallic symbol or what? <laughs> okay. And then here is the Three of Pentacles. And there's a, a guy building a wall, but he's building it all by himself. Okay. There's judgment. And I, I think that's a very interesting card because there are also some kind of conjunctions to the galactic center that have been occurring. Okay. So this is about a portal way opening up. Um, there's the fool. And in this card, it is a bear swimming over in the middle of the night, in a storm, no less, um, with uh, a pelican on the top. So we don't know if he's the bear is swimming for that life preserver, if he's swam out in the middle of the storm to maybe eat that poor pelican there. We don't know that. The fool <clears throat> taking a risk. Here is the queen of chalices. See her sitting on the... Uh, water crystal bridge kind of a thing you know I, I, I'm so sorry that there's a glare on these cards I really am they're real shiny then we have the three of wands <coughs> now maybe some of you can't see but this is a a, a, a figure uh, it looks to be a feminine figure and she is um offering flowers to the um, fire there. And we can see that the wand itself is like built of a pillar of smoke, um, of flowers though, okay? I love the magician card in this deck. There is the magician. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a, a figure that he's playing with, see, between his hands against the backdrop of this full moon. It's a huge moon. Then here's the hanged man. I, I think that's a very striking image. The body is floating, but the, the face, he's face up, but the waves are like drowning him, even though he is face up in the water. He's already submerged in the water. And then we have the seven of wands. And this is someone running uh, across jumping from place to place, um, running perhaps. Now, I have in this deck in a sense <clears throat> There are kind of three um, moon cards here. The Queen of Chalices is going to represent a water sign. So Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces. Now, the moon is ruled by Pisces. <clears throat> we have the Scorpio full moon. And then the rulership of the sign of Cancer is also the moon. So this Queen of Cups in the center is very important. And she is our focus card. 
um, then we have an actual huge moon, even though the magician is uh, represented by, um, is ruled by the card, the sign, um, the planet Mercury. Okay, but yet there's that moon there. And then we have the actual card of Neptune himself who rules the moon, the hanged man. So this tells me <clears throat> very much so that for some of you, this particular moon and the nodal shifts of the moon um, are going to be very, very important. Whether you have the true node in Leo or not, whether you have that particular aspect or not, this is going, this is really um, <clears throat> about an, uh, an energy shift. Um, I have three wands here. Typically the wands are, are uh, traditionally they are interpreted as work or work endeavors. I simply look at them as emotional components um, because in order for you to get out there and do anything, you have to first be motivated. So to me, the wands uh, represent ambition and desire that go get them spirit. The pentacles, and we only have one, in the spread itself <clears throat> represent the um, on the physical plane and they represent the actual doing of the work or the practicality of doing the work of actually just getting in there and getting it done um, it is also the energy of trying to be grounded now I think for some of you you have in effect decided that Whatever it is that you need to do or that you want to do, I think you are you will or have been contemplating uh, setting out and doing it all by yourself. Okay, uh, and really the truth of the matter is is that no matter what it is you want to accomplish or achieve, you know, really it comes down to you. Um, this is not to say that there aren't or won't be people who come into your sphere who will help and assist you. But really, it's kind of more of a what you put into it is what you get out of it. Um, the judgment card. I think some of you are up in the air and it's like you're waiting for something to occur. You're waiting for something to come through. You're waiting for some kind of sign, some kind of message, some kind of um, <clears throat> sign marker to tell you, what am I supposed to do? I, you know, I'm not exactly sure where I go from here. Um, and then we have the Fool card. Now that's Uranus. And we do have Uranus in Aries. And Uranus is going to be moving through, uh, coming into the last degrees here pretty soon of Aries. And then it will move into the sign of Taurus. And Uranus in Taurus is uh, going to be some financial upheavals and, and major changes. I want you to keep in mind that whatever happens on a world or global on the global stage will affect you on a personal level. Um, this we have an eclipse coming up. I, this is the second time I've mentioned that on um, August twenty first, and some people are predicting that the markets are going to crash. Um, so this could be maybe some of you are are intuitively getting a sense that you're going to have to figure out a way to do something different. You're going to have to figure out how to step outside of the box. That can be that Uranian energy here. Okay. Um, you're going to have to figure out how to um, shore up your personal possessions, your money, your bank accounts, your, your apartments, your, you know, whatever it is that you personally yourself own. This is not necessarily what you own in partnership with someone else. Um, this could even be about going into business. Maybe someone has approached you and they want you to go into business with them. Um, why? Because Aries uh, is opposite. The first house is opposite the seventh house. And the seventh house is the, the house of partnership. So it's not just about marriages. It's about business partnerships, friendships. It's about those social connections that you make. Um, things of that nature. Um, this queen, though, she kind of sits... Um, like above the fray, as though um, kind of the message that I'm getting is, is not quite right. Maybe I, I will get it. 
uh, as I go along, but it's kind of saying that I think she feels or she knows intuitively that there is some level of abundance or some type of abundance around her. I feel that the Three of Wands in this deck is saying that this is someone who is in effect kind of casting their fate to the wind and they're going to allow um, to kind of step out of the way and allow uh, the divine or the source or the universe kind of move things uh, for them. But indeed, the person has put their wishes out and their intentions out into the universe. Okay? Most definitely. Now, for some of you, this could be about a project that you've been working on. And the reason why I say that is because I have the magician and then the hanged man. And we know that Mercury has just come out of, um, has just gone direct. However, it, it takes another almost two weeks for Mercury to really, really quit playing tricks on you. So it's kind of like this Mercury wants to move real fast, the magician, <clears throat> okay? Uh, this is like you, you, you're in the background trying to maybe get everything set and ready to go, or you're ready to go, you're ready to work your magic, but then here comes the hanged man, and that is the, the card of pause. It's like, I can't go anywhere. There's nothing I can do. So this is really a moment of waiting. But what you're supposed to be doing while you're waiting is you're supposed to be in the background continually practicing those tricks. You see, that's how the magician gets good. Um, and the magician never performs a trick without first um, really practicing it and knowing it, um, perfecting it and refining it. Um, Mercury has that, um, it's that fluid, it's a metal, but it's also fluid. OK, so it's like saying that, you know, your ideas are solid, but they need to be perhaps a bit more fluid. OK, here's the seven of wands. And this is somebody he's this person is booking it across this card. So I think that at some point, if you feel stuck in some way about something, um, know that in a moment this is about to take off for you. And this could be that really you're going to literally you're going to be hopping from one thing to the next. Like what the hell just happened? Um, and I think that it, it would behoove you that if things are kind of slow right now, uh, for you to take a moment to look back over where you have come from, all of the things that you've done and that you've accomplished, um, and, and appreciate and savor that. Um, because what it's, what I'm picking up is that it's more so like you're being asked to look at Everything that has come before this moment that's about to happen has been a zigzag course, okay? And it has been, this moment of pause right now is about, um, this has been the dress rehearsal, okay? It's the dress rehearsal. <clears throat> and in order for you to be able to move through whatever this new change is that's coming, you're going to have to be able to draw up on all of those past and previous experiences that you've been going through in the dress rehearsal. That's why you have a dress rehearsal. OK, um, you want to make sure that the lines are right, that you hit your marks in the correct place, that you're standing in the right uh, spot for the uh, light to hit you. You want to make sure that you, you're able to project your voice enough where everybody can hear you. You want to um, stand where people can see you in the best light. So. Um, I, I, I do feel, listen, the Eight of Pentacles and, and the imagery of the card is so beautiful. This woman who is tending her garden, these are sunflowers. And sunflowers um, represent the sun. And the sun is all about victory. And it is about success. And it is about power. And it is about um positive things. It is about growth coming in. Nothing grows without the sun. And because she's watering these flowers, in the center of each one of these sunflowers is a, a pentacle. So whether this is about actual uh, physical finances for you, um, what we, the implication is that whatever you have been planting over these past years and months, as we move through this 
um, will now start to blossom and bear fruit for you. Okay. Um, the Eight of Pentacles says that you still have some more work to do, though. That's, I think, why the energy of the Magician and the Hanged Man has come out. Um, now, I want to take a look at... We have the two threes. Now, for some of you, the two threes... Um, I don't necessarily see this as a relationship reading. But then again, in terms of the romantic sense... But then again, it could very well be because why we're talking about the seventh house. And um, the seventh house is that person who reflects things back to you. Um, you go into business and to partnership with people who uh, have the qualities that you lack. Okay. So say, for instance, um, I want to go into, I don't know, I want to start a business doing something. Well, I can do X, Y, and Z. But I'm not good at doing A, B, and C. So what I do is I, I, I find somebody who's going to be very, very good at A, B, and C. And then the two of us will join forces. All right. And so what I lack helps to build them up. And what they lack helps to build me up. So that's how uh, that attraction, and it is really sometimes about opposites attract. But at the same time, it comes down to once I go into partnership, once I get with that person who's got the A, B, and C that I lack, then how do we share the controls? How do we, what do we do? What do we put forth uh, that's going to have our name on it together? Um, how do we do this in a cooperative manner? How do we bring about harmony and beauty and fairness and justice, not only within uh, the business that we're trying to, dealing fairly with our consumers or our clients, um, trying to bring, bring them the best and most beautiful products, but also how do we, we, bridge that space between the two of us so that we can continue to work in, in harmonious energy. Um, and really what this card, what the, the deck is very, the energy is rather harmonious, even though I've got these weird cards of judgment, the fool, the magician, and the hangman. Those are really some strange um, major arcana cards to me. Nevertheless, here they are. And again, the message is that the portal way is open. And if you put out your wishes and your intentions, something's going to move for you. Okay, this could be about anything. Now, two threes traditionally can be um, interpreted as, as excessive flirting and cheating. And maybe in, in a sense, this has come about where you're meeting a lot of people or a lot of new people have come into your sphere. And maybe you're, you know, trying on different partners and whatnot, seeing how things are going to play out for you. Um, it could be that. But at the same time, uh, I'm going to give you the other um, meaning of the threes. The other threes, uh, two threes, it says one of you are craving more change and excitement. And again, this could be like you want to break out. You know, and here we have the judgment. Man, I'm thinking about it. I don't know. And the fool represents Uranian energy. And Uranus is all about freedom. It is about liberation. It is about rebellion. And then we have somebody running away. <laughs> I mean, they are literally booking it across this. But look at this. And this is what I find to be interesting is that we have the vortex here. Oh, God. I don't know if you can see that. There. We have the vortex there. And then it's kind of repeated over here. Okay. Uranus is about uh, friendships, groups, organizations, but it's also about liberation and rebellion. That's why you, you're seeing all these weird things that are happening around the world with, with the government, with the elections, with groups of people popping up who feel so disenfranchised. They feel like nobody's listening to them and they're saying, hell no, we're not going to take it anymore. So it's this is about liberation and freedom. And Uranus always brings about uh, a kind of a, it can be that freedom, that energy of freedom, but can also have a very, very angry quality to it. Um, on the other side, we have Ace of Wands, Three of Wands, and the Magician. Traditionally, the Ace of Wands is a yes card, but it is also about the opportunity uh, of a, a new, uh, this could be a new job. It could be a new fire under your butt. You know, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Yeah, I'm ready to do that. I'm going to do that now. Okay. 
here's the magician, but I need to I need to tweak it a little bit. Maybe I need to talk myself up a little more. <laughs> the magician. Um, but this one, the Three of Pentacles with the Queen of Chalices. Let me look at this Three of Pentacles right quick. I know what it says, but it's just kind of standing out oddly to me. After the early stages of a project, there is a surge of pleasure in realizing you've achieved some tangible level of competency. Take pride in your work. Be meticulous and patient. Giving credit to the, to the noble endeavor you've chosen to undertake. Likewise, as each brick supports its brother, this is a good time to interlock your plan with other visions. Let other people's input influence your own. This is a great time to build trust and stability. It says a mason lays his bricks expertly, eyes closed in concentration, developing a simple rhythm. He has already built up a considerable portion of the wall and he has a long way to go before it's done. But he doesn't balk from the involved repetitive, uh, repetitive labor before him, trusting his skill to see him through to the end. Contented. Undaunted, he continues happily in his task. So I think this is really about um, maintaining the faith and the hope, putting your intentions and your will out into the universe that um, you will uh, move through this. Now, I want to... Oh, I didn't give you the other threes, did I? Yeah, well, I did. Um, let, me, let me go back and... Dang it, I need to take this off my phone. <clears throat> I know many of you have been kind of not happy with me because I haven't been doing a lot of uh, romantic readings. I can only give the messages as they come. So if this message doesn't resonate with you, then it's not meant for you. Maybe there's somebody else who has something going on in their professional life. Um, and right now, that's what the cards want to speak about. Now, let me see here. Let me see if I can find the two threes and a spread. Aha, so no, the three threes is the one about the excessive flirting and cheating. The two threes appearing in a spread foretells of a small but pleasant surprise. And I think that's what this is. And to me, usually, typically, the seven of wands traditionally is, is the card of um, being in a better place than you realize, but we see the guy standing on top of a hill. He even got two different shoes on because he had to jump up real quick and get to work. You know what I mean? But this person is running across the tops of the wands. So in one um, instant, it speaks to some kind of mastery of the situation. Okay. But it's having to move very quickly. Let me, let me see what that's, if it will help you if I read this. I don't know why you itchy little dog. It's a seven wands are spread out across the shallows and you definitely pick your way from fence post to upturned fence posts. Your path is clear, but the way is treacherous. One misstep will plunge you into the river, but you remain poised, unshakable. As your previous experiences have made you keen and adroit, you have been preparing for this moment. Your light-footed confidence will carry you through to the end. You've been preparing for this moment. That's what these two cards say. Sometimes we, we allow uh, stagnancy to, it can be very frustrating, but it's about learning how to work with the energy of the stagnancy that will really pay off in the long run. It says the spotlight is on you. You must be resolute in the face of adversity. Your vision is really worth something and it is up to you to navigate the treacherous terrain that will bring it to fruition. You are nimble, skillful, and the iridescent tendrils of your ideas will guide you down, down the correct path. Stick to the plan. If you can navigate through this challenging time, there will be no stopping you. And that's why I keep saying that really the card, the card is saying to me that you are, it's going to bear fruit for you. So whatever it is that you are moving through or will be changing for you, stick to it. Um, I want to take a look. The Judgment with the Queen of Challenges, challenges, the Queen of Chalices, and the Magician card. This diagonal here.
before I do that, I want to give you the meaning of the, of the judgment card. Because I was just reading to you from the intuitive standpoint. Let me give you the, the judgment card here. A door swings open to reveal the spiraling multicolored vortex that lies behind it. Your present surroundings are a calm, deep blue, serene, but silent and wistful as a midnight mist. The overabundant rainbow vortex seeping in from the other world offers a welcome change of pace. The swirling mist beckons you in. Of course, crossing the threshold into the unknown will be daunting. The end of a journey can always be sad. But it, it but it is the time it is but it is time to make matter of fact decisions and decide if where you are now is worth stagnating in the face of resplendent rejuvenation. And this is why the full card has come up. Okay, because this is really I think for some of you, you are in one respect, you know that something has to change, you know that something needs to change, you are ready for the change, but at the same time. You might be afraid that you're going to make the wrong decision. Okay. Let me give you this uh, fool. <clears throat> a pelican is perched upon an ocean post, illuminated by a waning crescent moon. He piercingly regards, oh, that's a wolf. It looks like a bear to me. Uh, regards a sudden lone wolf cast among the waves, paddling among unfamiliar territory. Hoping for an easy dinner, he has foolishly swam out beyond the cautious trappings of his solid world. Gazing up at the stoic pelican, the wolf realizes as he has departed on a journey that could easily result in his own demise. The fool represents a new beginning, striking out naively on a bold new adventure. You may be filled with unlimited optimism, a feeling in your heart that you cannot fail. This may prove misguided. And in due time, you might find your idealism tempered by painful experience. So approach with caution. Decide whether taking this risk is worth making yourself vulnerable in an unfamiliar setting. If the answer is yes, if the risk is worth it, then show no fear. Only those who choose to journey will ever discover new horizons. And I think that's why this Queen of Chalices has shown up. Because in a sense, this is about trusting in your own abilities and your own faith. And it is about, um, it's almost not that you are untouchable, but it's um, like if you can remain above, I don't even know what the, what the phrase is that I'm trying to, to, what word I'm looking for. Maybe it'll come to me later. But here are the three of wands. And this is really about... Um, putting your intentions. Remember, I think yesterday we were speaking about the law of attraction and it's kind of what that's saying to me. Okay. And for some of you right now, things are kind of at a standstill. Um, let me go to this queen of chalices. Now with the Sabilas, the everyday Oracle, there may be another message here. So let's take this out and see. Now, this is going to apply whether you are male or female, same sex, heterosexual. Why? Because we all come to a place uh, in our lives sometimes where we know things have to change. doesn't matter um, that something has to change. We all feel sometimes we, you know, God, something just, something's got to give. Um, or we can feel dissatisfied with what we have now or, or or where we are right now and we want to move into a different space and in, in a different um energetic uh dimension so that could be what this is telling us so it doesn't necessarily have to mean that this is only a reading for a female okay simply the energies right <clears throat> now the three cards are the Costanza, the Vedovo, and then here is the Reunione. Now, the Reunione, uh, Reunione can be um, the meeting or the reunion. 
Uh, it can also, sometimes this card can also be about a job interview, okay? The Costanza is the immutability of something. Here, I'm so sad that shit just hasn't changed for me. And I need something, I need to move, I need to do something. For some of you, this could be about, you know, you hate that job. You realize that the job that you've been in and that you've been doing is really just not doing it for you anymore. And you want to do something different. Well, I dare say perhaps the time is coming. Um, for others of you, this could be about the recognition that uh, indeed something is ending. Okay. And, and that situation will not change. Either way, it's, it speaks to change. Okay. And that whatever that situation is that has not changed, I'm sad about that. But the reunion, it says, you know what? It's time now to move into something new. Okay. So this is really going to be about taking a chance um, and, and moving out of your comfort zone. Um, I want to look at the magician. No, I don't. I want to look at this hanged man. First, let me give you the meaning because it may mean something. Um, it may resonate more so with you than what my interpretation gave you. A man hangs suspended in the ocean. Mad-eyed piranhas descending on his flesh. Mad-eyed piranhas. Unperturbed or unaware of the danger, the man gazes motionlessly, motionless above the water to the stars. He exudes the serenity of a martyr in his final moments. The bones of the man and the fish are clearly visible. Oh, yes, they are. I just noticed that. Huh. Suggesting a transparency of the surface, allowing us to see the inner mechanisms beneath. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a red thing. Society would have you believe the idea that, that active mastery of your environment leads to greater fulfillment. No doubt in many ways this is true. But when life has transgressed beyond your control through your own doing or the random unhappiness of fate, sometimes the best thing you can do is to surrender. Choose not to react. Rather, focus on the lucidity gained of suffering. Forsake action for insight so you may live to fight another day. I think it's a really awesome uh, interpretation of that card. You see, because sometimes things can happen to us and we're like, man, I don't know why that happened. I don't understand. Well, it's just fate. It's just destiny. And it's neither good nor bad. It's just things happen. Uh, it is the cycle of change. Yes. And so... Again, I remember I kept saying it just if you can just kind of wait this time out. Yeah, you want to do something. You want to act. You want to move. Here's that magician. OK, but the hangman says, you know, just kind of wait right now. And then eventually everything will work itself out. Um, and so what you want to do is you want to be ready. Because there's a person that said, man, I'm booking it across the, you know, let's take a look at this hanged man here. Yes, that's exactly what the card is saying. Um, the three cards are the desperate jealousy. This is about a, a excessive attachment to a situation. So this is about, you know, man, that sucked, and I, I, I want it. I want it to change, or man, I'm ready for that change now. You know, but it ain't happening fast enough for me. Either way, you're kind of stuck in between. Here is the Speranza. Now, this is the hope card, okay? But it can also speak to fear. We have the Letterato, and this is the card of discovery. So this is really about a moment of taking, like I said, taking a look at where you have come from. Look at all the things that you've been through, because that crap was a dress rehearsal. It was a dress rehearsal. I'm going to pull um, three Neapolitans on that card. Let me take a look at the judgment right quick. And I think for many of you um, out there, 
no matter what your challenge is, what you're struggling with, I think you're, you're, you, it reads sort of like a dissatisfaction, but not really a dissatisfaction. It's more so like maybe a boredom. Um, and sometimes when you feel that it's like a soul disquiet, you can't even put a label on what you're feeling or why you're feeling that way. You just know that something doesn't feel right. This is your soul trying to, to, to grow to the next level. Okay, and typically that's what the nodes are all about. The nodes will bring back past life issues. Um, and they it's designed to have you recognize, uh, you know, I've been there and I've done that already. And now I need to move in another direction. But in order for you to be successful in the new direction that you're going in, you're going to have to bring those things that, that um, you're now kind of sick and tired of it. You're going to have to look at it in a fresh new way because those skills will serve you very well moving into the new direction. So it's not about trying to run away from things from the past. It's about putting those things into perspective and then seeing what you can utilize from the past. How do I dust that off and make it something brand new and take that and move through the next direction? It's sort of like that Six of Swords card, you know, Sometimes we try to escape the way we think or what we believe or what has happened to us, the way we think, but it is really about the way you're going to perceive it as you move through. And if you can and if you can look at the crappy, the shitty, the bad, the boring, the yucky, the whatever, if you can kind of look at that and be like, okay, well, you know, if I had a chance to do something different, um, you know, and I look at this experience that was kind of crappy, what would I do differently? What skills, what can I do to shore that up so that as I move forward, I won't have to perhaps go through that experience again. And or if I do, it won't be as bad. Yeah, I think that makes some sense. You know, ultimately, you know, you're responsible for whatever it is that's going on. All right. So you can choose to either sit back and lament uh, and cry over spilt milk or you can choose to, you know, pick up that damn cup. And keep it moving. <laughs> Stepping over the spilt milk. Well. I think for many of you, there are two messages that come out with this with these three cards. This is very interesting to me. Remember I said it doesn't necessarily look like a romantic reading, but there's the underpinnings of some type of romantic something that did not go well. Um, but at the same time, this spread is really not about the other person. It is about you. Any of you who are listening, and this may resonate with you. We have the disgrazia, the tower, the house on fire, this change. Suddenly, this new portal way has opened up. Okay, what do I do? For some of you, like I've been saying all along, this could really be you have realized that the relationship don't run out of road. It is time for you to go. Well, here is the superbia. Now... Typically, uh, this will represent the male, and they are, in a quote-unquote traditional sense, the males are always the star of the show. Look at how the uh, the birds, actual the male birds are always more colorful than the female birds. But this card can also speak to vanity and ignorance and arrogance, okay, and sometimes hedonism. But at the same time, it can also be uh, someone who's very proud. Um, or someone who shows you your true colors. This could also be about you um, finally um, recognizing your own lovely plumage, okay, and wanting to display that. Again, it kind of speaks to, these are two Uranus cards. This is about some, some form of liberation for you. Here is the Limoneo. That is the card of marriages and contracts. But it also speaks to the highly spiritual nature of some type of connection or partnership. Now, what does this mean on the judgment card? Remember, we're we are talking about uh, stepping through a portal way. Okay. And either um, we can either allow our fears or our extreme arrogance or what have you um, to cause us to make a mistake, okay, or 
we can fess up, show who we really are, and move through that energy. All right? Something is definitely changing here. I'm going to pull cards, Neapolitans, on this letterato. This magician. I think uh, for many of you in different areas of your life, this is about a new partnership coming in. Okay? This is a new partnership coming in. Um, and whatever that means for you. Now, I want to pull cards on this... Uh, hanged man. And well, if you're still sitting around lamenting something else from the old way, you might miss out on this opportunity for this new partnership. Um, is it going to be easy? No, it may not be easy. King of Wands. The Ace of Wands. That's two Aces of Wands. And then the Six of Swords. I think that's very telling on these three cards here. Now, for some of you, this may have been dealing with a fire sign individual, but I would dare say that this is an energetic representation of that Leo North Node energy. Yes, that shit's about to change. But the Six of Swords says, really, it's going, I just said that. It's like the Six of Swords. It's really going to depend on how you look at it, okay? It's literally going to depend on how you're going to control those emotions, control, um, try to accept those new things, that new surge of energy, that new uh, person who steps in uh, as opposed to where you are coming from. And you're going to have to try to temper it. But to me, this is that, yes, this is definitely a new partnership coming in for many of you. It may involve a, a, a king of wands. I don't know. Um, if nothing else, it is a very passionate energy. Okay, Leo rules leaders and leadership. So this could just be even simply in a business that there's somebody that's going to step into your sphere who is going to be able to help you realize. Remember, I was just saying, if I met somebody and I've got X, Y, and Z and they've got A, B, and C, there he is. <laughs> or there she is. Okay, um, I want to look at this. There's a lot of wands energy here. This is at present. Lots of wands. Wow. Seven of wands. There's two seven of wands on top of here. It goes with that Disgrazia card. Well, you know, Pat, that shit didn't work out. Okay, but now... You know, I know something's got to change, so I, I need to figure out what it is I got to do. Okay, and it says that you're in a better position than you realize. Well, now I have two fives. Here's the five of cups on top of that superbia. No matter how, what this is talking about, yes, yes, yes. You know, maybe we both acted in a bad manner or... or um, you know, maybe it's the realization that that person really couldn't fulfill whatever it is I, I thought they could. Um, here's the five of wands. Okay. It speaks to a change in a relationship. Now, these are outside changes that are coming in. This falling in for some of you. This is coming up for you. For some of you, you are already going through that. Remember I said at the very beginning, this is like, man, you know, I, I got to get, I got to get out of here. I got to do something. Okay. This could literally be, like I said, the relationship has run out of road, no matter what that relationship is. For others of you, this is the future. And, and outside changes are going to come in. Uh, why? It's time. There's the judgment card. This is time for a change. Um, let me pull cards on this. Um, I want to pull cards on the seven of wands. Yeah. And for some of you, this this change will come about because of a, a, a job. I don't see a, a lot of like this kind of says, you know, all of a sudden you just got to get up and go. 
you know, if you've been waiting on news about a, a job or a promotion or, you know, it's coming. So what you want to do now is you just want to get yourself ready. I can't tell you exactly when it's going to come, but it will come. Ace of Cups. Six of Wands, the victory. The Seven of Swords. Now, the Seven of Swords in this deck, this is where we, this is why we're stuck. This is what we're thinking, but it's also our way through. So to me, this is coming, this Seven of Swords, it's coming up as the, um, um, energy of like a move. It's not having to do with um, anybody pulling the wool over your eyes. There's a way through. There's a way through. Okay. And you're going to have to figure out and at least to be ready. There's a way through this. Please formulate one question in your mind. Now, in order for you to gain any real clarity or insight into um, what is going on, that does require personal reading. I can't tell you if this is, um, to me, this, this spread is kind of speaking about love and romance. It's speaking about work. It's speaking about family. It's speaking about friendship. It's speaking uh, just in general. It's speaking about just the human condition. What happens when... <clears throat> We know that there's a change that needs to come in. <clears throat> and we know that we're right on the cusp or the edge or the abyss of that change, but yet we don't know exactly either what we're going to do going forward or what happens. Um, and a lot of times what will happen is if you not, you know, you don't make the move, then the universe will bring in things that'll make you move. That's why we have those two fives there. Okay. So what do you want to do? You want to kind of make your plan A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. <laughs> um, you know, and know that whatever it is that you've been working on or you've been thinking about or that you've been, it will eventually bear fruit. And I think that's the energy of Jupiter, even though that card doesn't represent Jupiter. Jupiter will bring in solutions and answers for you. One of his symbols is the oak tree, um, which stands for strength and longevity. Um, he is about optimism. And so the saying goes from little acorns grow tall oak trees. So this is about knowing that if you've been um, able to, I don't know, kind of keep a bit of grounded direction, even though everything may, may seem all herky jerky and confusing and, you know, one minute it's one way and the next minute it's the next way. Um, you know, know that whatever seeds that you have been planting, okay, if you've been planting seeds, it will bear fruit. Say, for instance, some of you are like, well, God, you know, when am I going to meet somebody in, in my relationship? If you've been putting your intentions into the universe, okay, then know that you're, the seeds that you've planted will bear fruit. But you want to be ready when that person shows up. <laughs> right? Okay. That means you might have to do a little life gardening, a little pruning, a little raking up the yard, you know, get some things out of the way. <clears throat> Romance. Look at that. Now, let me read you what that card said. Uh oh. Hold it. <clears throat> Number 70, page 70. A very important relationship is about to enter or has recently entered your life. This is the romance you have been waiting for. Like all partnerships, there may be ups and downs, but don't let that deter you or shake your confidence. Have faith that love is coming into your life to stay. If your question was about a current relationship, you can expect the parties to become closer to one another. Past disagreements will fade away and trust will grow. All relationships have peaks and valleys. This card indicates an upward movement to a new level of dedication and intimacy. This can include engagement, marriage, 
or a form of recommitment to one another. See, that's that change. See, five, the fives aren't always about bad changes. It just said there's a change coming. Whatever, but it's some kind of outside influence. It's, really, it's the universe. It's changing stuff for you. Okay. You may not see anything going on on the physical plane, but that's what I was saying about stepping out of the way, you know, and, and doing some life gardening. <laughs> Just step, you know, step out of the way and focus on really how are you going to be the best that you can be. First and foremost, for yourself. Because if you ain't no good for yourself, how the hell do you think you're going to be good for somebody in a relationship? Okay? <laughs> because the most important relationship is the one you have with yourself. Now, and, and then take a look at some of the stuff that's been bugging you. Is it really that important? That's what I mean by life gardening. Okay? Get rid of that crap that just ain't no longer serving you anymore. Cool. One heart oracle tarot. This was way longer than I wanted it to be. The throat chakra. And what this card is telling me is that there is going to be a moment of truth coming. And there is going to be the opportunity to listen, honesty, forthrightness. Um, and even some vulnerability um, will be coming into play. If this is a situation where you feel, you know, I can't do this anymore, we have the romance card, yes. So this could be that some of you are ending a relationship and you're going to have to voice that, hey, you know, this, and whatever those that truth is for you, that's going to clear the way for that new romance to come in or that new partnership. For those of you where the person may come back or you may hear from the person, you're going to have to, again, be truthful, be forthright, be honest. It's going to serve you quite well, okay? And even to be a bit vulnerable. Take the risk. That's what that says. Let me read to you what, I, I don't think there's a lot of stuff going on with the throat chakra here. Let me read it for you. It's the fifth chakra, and it resonates uh, the key words are I speak. Located in the throat area, this chakra is associated with communication, sound, creativity, and the ability of clear audience. That's one of these psychic abilities or inner hearing. Many artists, speakers, writers, singers, and others in the creative arts have active throat chakras. To activate the chakra, use your voice in some way. Sing, chant, hum, laugh, make some noise. Energizing the chakra helps you speak your truth in a clear and kind manner, improving your relationships and increasing your sense of well-being. So this is really about being able to speak your truth um, without being mean or nasty or sometimes it can be about allowing bygones to be bygones and saying that. But if you're going to say that, you're going to have to mean that. You're going to have to stick by that um, and not be throwing it up at people every chance you get. So um, that's it. I, I do hope uh, that reading, you know, and romance can be many things because not everybody's interested in having a romantic relationship. You can be in love with your job, <laughs> you know. You can be in love with the groups that you hang out with. You can be in love with, um, you know, wanting to help animals or, or whatever. Romance can be really whatever you, however you choose to look at that. Um, I, I do know that everybody wants love and everybody needs love, but you have to be open and willing for it to come in. And sometimes that is about uh, taking a risk and being vulnerable, uh, knowing that, yes, that person can hurt me, but having enough faith and enough trust that that person won't. And, and that is what, uh, being vulnerable in love is all about. If that person really does, they will, they won't hurt you, you know, but for some of us, we have, have had such crappy, um, relationships that, uh, we, we fear being hurt again. Well, you know, you can live your life in fear or you can, 
feel the fear and do it anyway. <laughs> Look what came up underneath there. The Five of Pentacles. Look at that. That beautiful sun disc in the center. So it's definite changes coming. And how you, everything that you've been going through has been a dress rehearsal. Okay? So I do hope those messages helped. Till next time, namaste.